way of Will John. How many of the people that you interviewed, talked to, and how many of them have this sort of practice? Who, who's doing this? Are all the elites? Well, the elite athletes doing this? Yeah, I mean, I, I like to say the mental game is the last frontier in sports, and you know, pretty much now everyone is you know pretty good at strength and conditioning. Um, pr- everyone's pretty good in terms of understanding, you know, uh, eating clean, uh, and everyone understands rest and recovery is important. Uh, but in terms of the mental game, a lot of athletes still at the highest level, uh, you know, they, they don't necessarily have a world-class game plan. And as you know, at the highest levels, it's all about consistency. So if uh, we don't have a consistent mental game plan, you know, again, lots of luck, we're going to be inconsistent in our performance because the mind leads the body. And if your head isn't prepared, your body's not going to be prepared. And, but what I would say is in terms of at least, you know, meditation is one of the, you know, kind of the key mental game skills. Uh, I would say about half the athletes I work with at, uh, you know, college pro level, Olympic level, uh, love meditation. The other half, they're just not going to do it and it doesn't work for them. And that's okay. (laughs) Because right. there's other things that they can do or that works better for them. So no. the key is to have a, a like an inner toolbox with all these power tools in there. And so meditation, they might prefer the Navy SEAL breathing. They might prefer, you know, taking 10 breaths and just trying to be more mindful on each breath and, you know, count the breath on each ex- exhalation. Uh, they might do other things like listen to music that gets them in the right frame of mind. So there's a variety of things that you can do as an athlete, but meditation is really important because we have about 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day. And so our head is just filled with all this noise. And a lot of those thoughts, I think about 70 to 80% of those thoughts are negative. And so just giving the brain, the mind a chance just to clean itself, clear itself uh, just feels good. Feels really good. It's like a timeout for your uh, for your thinking. It is. It is everything. It really is. It's 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 so underutilized. And um, what's amazing is it's, it seems to have this exponential growth factor. And is this, if you continue to put this on, if you continue to polish the diamond, as you're saying, it just keeps sparkling. Like it just keeps getting better and better. At least that's what I found. And that seems to be from everyone's anecdotal evidence. That's what's happening. I'm curious what you found in the top performers on visualization, though, uh, this preparation before the game, you know, and I even want to touch on, uh, we do a lot of work with a company called MindSport, which is uh, also an app. And we definitely got to get into your app because I'm curious what you're, uh, what you're doing there. But on the visualization aspect, the prep and all of the evidence we have now for how the brain doesn't even understand that it's not real you know, uh, what it's doing or what's being visualized. What have you found? What would you suggest for a guy that wants to try and take himself from where he is to where he really wants to be? You know, what sort of training regiment in the brain should he get him or herself up to? Oh, love it. Uh, Visualization is, uh, is a game changer. And the key with visualization is um, it's just like any skill you need to practice it. And so I remember one NBA player that I worked with a few years ago, he said, you know, tell me about visualization. You know, I picture myself, you know, making the game winning shot, but what's more, you know, what else? And one of the things that we talked about is just spending a few minutes before each game, seeing yourself as a player you want to be and playing the way you want to play. And then maybe go over a couple, two or three, you know, different scenarios that might happen in the game. And then how do you want to respond like a champion? if you're faced with those situations. And so, you know, it could be, you know, you missed your first two or three shots. What are you thinking on your, you know, on the next shot? And, uh, and so being prepared for that is everything, you know, it's huge. And uh, so it's not just picturing winning, it's picturing the steps that lead to winning and uh, dealing with adversity that might come up and how you're going to handle it. Um, Great anecdote from one of the PGA tour players that I work with, uh, He's uh, he's one on the PJ Tour, uh, uh, you know, a solid, you know, veteran golfer. And he told me what he does is every 
tournament round, what he'll do, you know, he's staying at a hotel, he'll fill up the bathtub with warm water, put some Epsom salt in there. He's a little bit of of an older guy. And (laughs) he'll play all 18 holes in his mind before he goes out on the course. And so he's just sitting there soaking in the tub and just picturing, okay, first hole, first shot, you know, hits it on the fairway, then hits it on the green, sinks the putt. Okay, what's the next hole? And he's played these courses so many times that, you know, he's able to kind of see exactly what he's going to expect out there. And he said to, for him, that made all the difference between him being a good player versus a really, really, really good player. Visualization's fun too. A lot of times, um, we kind of do it spontaneously. We might, you know, like kind of like, you know, more daydreaming, but uh, we want to make it a little bit more consistent and then have a plan when we do it. So, okay, what am I going to visualize today? You know, it might be, Hey, I'm going up against a tough opponent. Let's see myself, you know, making my moves and, you know, and playing well and, uh, and loving the challenge. And again, when you're in that situation, it's almost like, man, it feels like I've been here before. And it's such a good feeling because it's like, I know what to do. Uh, One more quick thing on visualization. Uh, I love the story of Andre Agassi, the famous tennis player. He said when he first won Wimbledon, he said it took him literally like five, 10 seconds to realize that it actually happened because he had won Wimbledon so many times in his mind for a brief moment. He wasn't sure if it was real or not when he actually did win it. So Insane. yeah, a lot of the athletes I work with, um, you know, that spend just a little extra time. It doesn't have to be a huge block of time. It could be five minutes here, 10 minutes there, you know, but just more on an every day or every other day basis. Um, it's free, it's free training. It's great training. And it doesn't put any stress or strain on the body. 